it's me, Alwyn. This video has been a long time coming. My last two videos on black holes and accretion disks were meant to lead up to this. The Event Horizon Telescope is making an announcement tomorrow, April 10th, and so this is good timing. This is the story of a telescope that dared to see the event horizon of a black hole. It's really hard to see a black hole, and that's why this is such a big deal. But why is that? Well, you might think, well, obviously, because black holes are black and they don't emit any light. But the black holes that we're trying to see have accretion disks around them, and so the accretion disks are emitting light. There's another reason why, and it's because black holes appear very, very small. Black holes tend to be very small physically and very far away, and that combination makes them very hard to see. Our nearest star is the sun, and when you look at the sun, you can tell that it's a circle. And when you look carefully at the sun with a telescope, you can see structure on it, like sunspots, arcs. And when you look at a planet like Jupiter or Saturn through a telescope, you can see that it's also not just a point, but it's a circle with things on it. On Jupiter, there are bands. On Saturn, there are rings. And that's the goal for the Event Horizon Telescope as well, to see a black hole not just as a black point, but as more than that, as a circle with shape and structure, so we can understand the shape and structure, so we can understand the size and see that it has a size, whereas a point doesn't really have a size that you can measure. This is called trying to resolve it. The nearest stars to us other than the sun are only a few light years away, but they already look like points. When you look up into the night sky, all you see is a whole bunch of points. With your naked eye, you can't really tell that these are circles. And even with a telescope, you can't tell a lot of these are circles. With very powerful telescopes, some of these points have been revealed to be circles. Some of these stars have been resolved, but not many. So it's already very hard to resolve nearby stars, even a few light years away, and tell that they are circles and not just points. Most stars already look like points. In comparison, the nearest known black hole is a few thousand light years away. And this is because black holes are very rare. Only the most massive of stars can become black holes, crushed under their own gravity. And the most massive stars are also very rare. At the same time, black holes are very small. If you took the sun and turned it into a black hole, it would shrink by 100,000 times to a size of about 3 kilometers. This is the short shield radius of a, of a solar mass black hole. And so black holes are both very small and very far away. A supermassive black hole, like Sagittarius A star, is 4 million times as massive as the sun. And so it would form a black hole 4 million times the size of a solar mass black hole. So instead of 3 kilometers, it would be like 12 million kilometers. At the same time, a supermassive black hole is a little further away. Sagittarius A star is 26,000 light years away from us, or 8 kiloparsecs away from us. But I just said that the nearest uh, solar mass black hole is about 1,000 light years away. And so Sagittarius A star is only about 20 times farther away, but 4 million times bigger and easier to see. This makes Sagittarius A star our best bet for seeing the event horizon of a black hole, because even though it's a little farther away, it's much bigger, and so it's easier to see. The supermassive black hole in M87 is roughly a thousand times as massive as Sagittarius A star and it's also a thousand times farther away. The distances within a galaxy is about kiloparsecs. So for Sagittarius A star, it's eight kiloparsecs away, 8,000 parsecs away. The distances between galaxies are measured in megaparsecs, and a megaparsec is a thousand kiloparsecs. And so M87 in another galaxy is a thousand times farther away, but it also happens to be a thousand times bigger. And that means that M87 is just as hard to see, and or just as easy to see, as Sagittarius A star. So the Event Horizon Telescope has picked Sagittarius A star and M87 as its targets. To see something small, you need a big telescope. This also depends on wavelength. Equate wavelength over the size of the telescope to the size of the object R over distance. 
Now r, in our case, is 3 kilometers times 4 million for Sagittarius A star. As I said before, Sagittarius A star is about 12 million kilometers in size. For us, the distance is the distance to the center of the galaxy, or 8 kiloparsecs. This is about 26,000 light years. And here I write light year in terms of c, the speed of light, times year. And I use the fact that a year is 3 times 10 to the 7 seconds. Here, our wavelength of the brightest frequency that Sagittarius A star emits is a millimeter. Now we can solve for the size of the telescope. The size of the telescope is going to be d over r times the wavelength lambda. We can switch lambda and d, and this is going to help a little bit, because lambda is a millimeter and d is a 3 kilometers times 4 times 10 to the 6. And we can note that a millimeter is one one thousandth of a meter, and a kilometer is a thousand meters. And so a millimeter over a kilometer is just 10 to the minus 6, or 1 in a million. Then we can deal with the rest of the numbers, and we find that the telescope size that we need is a few percent of a, the, of a light second. Now, you may know that it takes about a third of a second for light to go around the world. And this is why, if you're a computer gamer, or if you're just trying to load up websites, it often takes a fraction of a second to get a response. Your ping is usually around a hundred or a few hundred milliseconds. And so a few percent of a light second is actually very close to the radius of the Earth. So in order to see something as small as the event horizon of Sagittarius A star, we would need a telescope about the size of the Earth, which is pretty insane. By combining signals from across the Earth, that is what the Event Horizon Telescope is trying to do. This is hard because the Earth is not just one huge telescope. You can imagine if you had a giant telescope, you'd have some giant mirror, and the whole mirror is collecting light. But when you look up at the sky, you don't see a giant mirror covering the Earth. We did not turn the whole Earth into a giant telescope. Instead, we combine signals from telescopes from across the Earth. So this is like taking a normal mirror and covering up most of it so that only some parts of the mirror can collect light. Some tiny little motes of dust are collecting light. So we're replacing our giant mirror with mostly emptiness and then there's a little, couple tiny little points around the Earth where we can measure anything. And so we are using a telescope made of a few scattered tiny points and that makes it very hard to figure out what anything looks like because it's like using a telescope that mostly doesn't work. Only a few points of it are actually working. It's even harder than that because of details related to correlated flux and Fourier transforms and radio interferometry and I hope you go and find out those details for yourself. The point is that we were able to build this giant telescope the size of the Earth, but with great sacrifice and with great cost. Most of the telescope is empty because the actual parts of the telescope doing the work are normal-sized telescopes that are scattered around the globe, and very smart people are figuring out how to piece together their signals to effectively act as a big telescope, and it looks like they were successful. The Event Horizon Telescope is making an announcement on April 10th. Maybe it'll look like something similar to these six examples. In these six examples you can see there's a round shadow which is the black hole itself. Light rays are being bent and the light rays that reach the black hole itself are going to be black and those create a shadow. Around that is a bright crescent, the innermost hottest gas moving toward us made brighter by relativistic beaming, or Doppler boost. One side is moving toward us because it's spinning toward us, and the other side is moving away because it's spinning away. And so one side is brighter than the other. And so you have a bright crescent near the center. You can see that the gas has an interesting structure. There are these toruses of gas, the structure of an accretion disk, gas spiraling inward. You can see that gas is denser and hotter close to the black hole, piling it up as it flushes into the black hole. 
gas is thinner further away and colder, but can glow if electrons are energetic enough compared to the gas, leading to a halo around the dense core. And that's the effect of non-thermal electrons. Thank you very much.